Ahoy there makers, let's take a look at the Tiny 2040. So the Tiny 2040, and it really is tiny, is a postage stamp size RP2040 powered development board with a USB-C connector and it's perfect for portable projects and really small robots as well. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So this is a teeny weeny powerhouse with, <laughs> with the chops to realize truly ambitious projects. So it's got more flash than the original Raspberry Pi Pico. It has a USB-C connector to make it really easy to connect uh, power and program. And it also has a programmable RGB LED as well. So you can use that for notifications and status. It also has a reset button, which is uh, something that was missing from the original Raspberry Pi as well. So let's have a look at some more of the features. So it's definitely small but mighty. So as we said before, it's powered by the same Raspberry Pi RP2040 that's on the Pico. It has a USB-C connector for programming and also for power. And it comes with a number of RAM sizes as well. So you get 2 megs or 8 megs and up. It's got a user programmable RGB LED, so you can use that to show all kinds of different statuses of your programs when they're running. It has 12 IO pins, that's four of them are 12-bit ADC as well. There are two switches on the top of the board, one of them is the boot select, but also there is a reset button. So the boot select you can also use in your programs uh, as a standard button, which is something you can't do on the standard Raspberry Pi Pico. Some clever wiring there from the Pimroni guys. So on board there's a 3.3 voltage regulator, which means that we can give up to 300 milliamps and the input voltage range is between 3 volts and 5 volts, 5.5. Here's a picture of all the different pinouts. This is great. I have things like this on my wall over there. So if I'm uh, wanting to reference what the pinouts are, I can very quickly get to them. So you can see there, there's 12 GPIO. They're the ones that are in green. There's one set of SPR, but you can choose between, you know, banks 16 to 13 or 12 to 9, depending which is more convenient for your projects. And similarly with I2C, there's two sets of I2C and they're split out there between pin 16 and 9 down the bottom. And there's also two sets of UART as well. So you can do some serial stuff over that. And then on the left hand side, we've got the ADC, we've got four of them. And there's another set of I squared C pins as well on the left hand side. You can see there between the reset and the boot button, there's an RGB LED. Uh, and that's actually broken out onto three separate pins, pins 20, 19 and 18. Pin 23 is also the boot select button, and you can use that just as a button to see in your programs if somebody's pressing that or not to start or stop your program, for example. The RGB LED uses those three pins, and each pin represents a different color, so you can use this as a pulse width modulation to adjust the brightness of all three. And there's some crafty little code that we'll look at in a second so that you can do all kinds of things with that. So getting started, there is a headed version and a non-headed version. And what we mean by that is the little pins that uh, are provided on this picture here, you can get them with or without those. And you can also run any type of firmware on here. So we've got C, C++, we have MicroPython, which is my preferred one. And we also have CircuitPython from Adafruit. One note, thing to note there, as, as I just said, the RGB LED is connected to pins 18 to 20 and it's active low. So the on off state works kind of the opposite way an LED would on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's just something to be aware of there. So this uses the exact same chip in the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, which means it's got a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz. It comes with 264K of RAM. And it's also got the programmable state machines as well on the GPIO pins, meaning that we can offload tasks that require really high transfer rates and precise timing onto those pins instead. It doesn't come with the 30, multi 30 multifunction GPIO pins. The Tiny2040 actually has 12. So let's go over to the captain's table. What I have over here, uh, I've got Thony running and I also have the uh, Tiny2040, it's this one here, just connected up to uh, the computer. So if I run this code, what this is going to do is it's going to have that uh, LED change various different colours. I'm just going to change the uh, overhead light to turn it off for a second so you can see this in all its majestic glory. Let's run that code again. So it's just going to cycle through a couple of different states um, and you can see there that we've got some nice colours going on. Let me put that light back on. So I've got a number of different uh, tiny 2040s on the, uh, the captain's table here. So you can see these are absolutely tiny. There you are next to my hand. And they come in uh, non-headed or headed version. So this one's got the header pins on. And they come in 2 meg, 8 meg. And by the time you watch this, there might be other different sizes available as well. And then next to it, just for reference, is the original Raspberry Pi Pico. So you can see it's uh, almost half the size of a Raspberry Pi Pico. So it runs MicroPython. We can do all the usual kind of MicroPython th things that we would want to do in there. So if just do A equals one, 
can print out the value of one. We can do all kinds of fancy programs. Now, one of the things I did um, when I was playing around with the Tiny2040 is I built a really small robot. It's going to go on the overhead camera and show you this uh, in a little bit more detail. So this has the Tiny2040 in the back there as a sort of backpack. Uh, and I've soldered on all the parts. There's two N20 motors under there, a little range finder at the front there for sensing distance, and there's a little motorboard on there so we can uh, power this as well. And this robot is absolutely tiny. So uh, I've not got a banana for scale, but I've got like a Lego man for scale there. You can just see just how small this robot actually is. So I hope you enjoyed this short video on the Tiny2040, and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.